you are life and exist now. Welcome back to Blue Line Patriot. Uh, so today we're going to be covering my uh, duty rifle. Um, I know people have a little bit of interest in this and I, I've covered it, uh, talked about it a little bit in my Bren 2 MS uh, video. So, um, you know, the other day uh, we went out for uh, qualifications, you know, the pistol, the rifle, the shotgun, whatever. And um, so, you know, I broke mine back out and it's been a while since I shot it and of course, Put a couple rounds down range, qualified, whatever, fell back in love with it. So I've been pretty much playing with it the last couple of days and I more or less wanted to, uh, I don't know, just put another video out there uh, regarding guns because, uh, well, guns are fun, right? So anyway, um, duty rifle is basically a rifle that you qualify with so that you can use on duty. Now some police departments issue your rifle. Um, some of those rifles are, you know, just rifles that are stuck in the cars all the time that you qualify on uh, some of those uh, issued rifles you get to take home with you um, others get locked up in an armory um, other departments allow you to qualify with your own personal AR um, which is my case I qualify with my own personal AR so I you know get this in the gun rack uh, at the car at work at the patrol car um, you know I take it home with me it's my own personal gun I get to you know my own personal rifle get to do pretty much whatever I want with it. I get to shoot it whenever I want. Um, I can change certain things out on it, provided I get the uh, okay from Chief. And um, so that's that. So this is my personal rifle that I use on duty. Uh, so uh, this rifle is a, five, is a SIG 516 lower receiver. Um, and then I changed out the upper receiver to a BCM 16-inch, uh, um, you know, uh, what is it, uh, DI. Uh, gun. Now the uh, SIG 516 originally is a piston action uh, AR, but um, you know I've had it for a long time. Um, I figure, and I shot the hell out of it, and I was like, you know what, the barrel's probably still good and whatnot. But I figured, eh, I'll just change out the, you know, I, I don't mind going to a, um, you know, what's it called a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here. You know, just trying out a different upper, basically. So I asked Chief, I said, hey, can I change out my upper on the rifle? Um, if so, great. If not, whatever, no big deal. Um, but anyway, I got the okay. So I changed out the upper receiver. Um, again, we have a 16-inch here, mid-length uh, gas system. Um, now, the mid-length gas system is a little bit better than the uh, carbine-length gas system. Basically, what it means is it bleeds off your gas from here instead of, like, back here. All right, so um, longevity-wise, it's just better for the rifle, whatever. Personally, I don't notice a difference, but whatever. So um, it, it's a little softer shooting, a little bit more flat shooting, whatever. Um, I do have the BCM uh, mod. I think it's a mod zero um, comp on it. I have the same thing on my um, on my Bren 2 MS as well. I love those comps. They're great. So um, let's go uh, tip to butt on this, and we'll talk about the... Uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about some stuff. So <clears throat> this rifle, I've had it for a long time. Um, as you can see, the uh, muzzle device is a BCM uh, mod. I think I'm pretty sure it's a mod zero uh, compensator on it, flash suppressor, um, muzzle brake, whatever. Uh, the barrel is rated for. Yeah, let's change that around a little bit. <clears throat> barrel on this guy. See if I can focus it. There you go. It's rated high pressure. It's HP is high pressure magnetic particle. I don't know what BFH stands for. I don't know if you can see it or not. I think you can though. BFH. I don't. I don't know what BFH stands for. But anyway, it's a one in seven twist chamber for five five six NATO, uh, which basically means you can put uh, two two three through it. You can put five five six through it. Um, it's all good to go. <clears throat> so just like on all of my rifles, all of my serious defensive rifles, um, you want to have a light. You always want to have that light on it. Um, now this light actually doesn't have a um, the glass in the front of it here. It's actually busted out. If you watch my uh, uh, Bren 2 video, it might have been my first video, um, I talked about this flashlight and how it's uh, the glass isn't there. 
I don't know if it fell out during training or when I was just shooting or whatever, but um, it's not there, but the, the uh, light still works. So um, this works just like my last one. If I click it once, it's a bright 500 lumen. Uh, it's pretty much good for about 150 yards. You can see anything. Uh, if you double click it, it strobes. If you triple click it, it's a little dimmer. I don't know if you could tell, but it's a little bit dimmer than um, it goes to 100 lumens compared to your this is a thousand or uh, this is 500 and then this is just 100 lumens so um, you know if you're on the trail you're trying to see things you're trying to search for whatever um, and you don't need that much light <clears throat> your 100 lumen it's pretty good so uh, you're not you're not burning through a ton of batteries you're just using the 100 lumens instead of your 500 so bump the camera now I got to reset my whole my whole thing here so extra 30 round magazine 30 round magazines we'll get to them later uh iron sights i do have uh, <clears throat> uh the bcm flip ups um you know there's not really much to say about them they're they're you know they're your standard your standard flip up sights of course they have the uh protective ears on the side and you know you have your front post there um, now mine is always up it's always up always 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 so i could put my um my light as far forward as i can because i'm never going to flip this down so whatever i just put it where it's at because it's never going to go down um the what do you call it the um foregrips here m-lock foregrips uh they were kind of an aftermarket thing i had to get uh when i first got this um upper receiver the what do you call it uh the i had a longer uh foregrip on here so this basically went all the way out to about here uh, but after a while i was like you know i don't really like how you know short my barrel looked or how long this looked so eventually i was just like ah whatever change it out get something a little shorter and um, so i got something a little shorter um plus i like the way it looked too so i was like okay so I did adjust that aftermarket, but again, that was cleared and okay. Uh, moving back, I have an Aimpoint Pro here. The Aimpoint Pro has been in service for a long time. Um, I've had it since 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. And um, it's holding up well. The only problem with it, and I'm getting a new optic very, very soon, but there's a problem with it where if you flick this uh it's not doing it now but if you hit this adjustment knob here sometimes that um that light that red dot in there will actually go out i think it just did it i gotta look at it myself here no nah, it's still there it's super dim you can't really see it in the camera there it's super dim there next next uh setting it's there but sometimes if you um hit this around the uh light in there will actually turn off now i don't know if i can send that back to aimpoint and they'll fix it um because i did paint it so i don't know if that like voids the warranty it might i gotta email them about that uh to find out but it would be nice to get a replacement for it uh, that'd be very swell but I don't know. So um, if this, you know, is the end of the life for it, then, you know, then uh, I'll just change it out to something else. No big deal. But uh, if I could send it in and have them fix it, that'd be great too. So uh, we talked about the sights. <clears throat> uh, we talked about our white light. Again, white light, guys, on any kind of a defensive rifle, uh, home defense rifle, truck gun, whatever, um, having a light on it is a very good idea now if it's one of those old maybe lever actions or an sks or you know something a little bit more classic i understand not having a white light on it but a white light is paramount um, identifying your target getting a good read on what's going on do they have a you know a, a pistol in their hand uh are they pointing a pistol at you or are they pointing a remote control at you you know a white light's gonna gonna provide much more clarity to the situation and of course more clarity you know the better especially when you're talking about uh potentially taking somebody's life so uh white lights very important i do have a mag pool uh foregrip on this personally i just like it um you know it's 
very comfortable for me. Uh, it gets my shooting grip the same every time. Um, and here's one thing about this though, <clears throat> that I see a lot of, a lot of newbies will do. They'll grab this, they'll grab this handle like this, you know, and it's like, no, like I literally just hold it kind of blocking what I do, but my grip is, is just like this. I don't do the C clamp. I think that's kind of stupid, but, um, I'll just, I'll always have my finger by my light ready to go. So when I'm holding, when I'm presenting, when I'm shooting, it's pretty much this or this, it just kind of depends. All right. But that C clamp, that like far out there C clamp thing, I think is so freaking stupid. I think it's the thing that the cool kids do right now that eventually they're going to cut the shit. Cause I think it's just a fad in my opinion. I just, I hate those long, skinny ARs out there that people are doing the C-clamps on. <clears throat> so whatever, carrying on. Um, let's talk about, now this white piece of paper here, I have this here because uh, my badge number is underneath there. Underneath there, I, I there's a big black uh, rectangle that's not painted, and then my uh, badge number's under there. But of course, we want anonymity so I could say what I want to say. And not have to put my employment and all that stuff at risk. So um, anything that's going to kind of give me away or put my department in the picture or anything like that, just, you know, uh, we don't do that. So uh, magazines, this brings me to my second tactical uh, pet peeve. <laughs> Fucking mag count. <sighs> so what reminded me of it the other day is some somebody, one of my good friends... Um, he put 31 rounds in his magazine when we were qualifying and then tried to load his magazine, slapped it, um, slapped it good, slapped it twice. Um, and then he, and then he kind of like aimed out at his target and the mag dropped to the ground and I was laughing my ass off because I was thinking that he hit it well enough for it to see. Um, and it still fell and I was like, what the, what the fuck? Like that's not supposed to happen. It didn't occur to me that he put... 31 rounds in the mag not 30 31 see people will put this is where this tactical bullshit comes in where people are like oh download your magazines by two so that they're easy to load and what i say is just put your fucking magazine in the right way ak-47 magazines are hard to load nobody talks about downloading them by two rounds all right, you got to just put the fucking mag in the right way. Um, M14 magazines are difficult to load sometimes. Nobody says to download those magazines to, to 18 rounds. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. Right now there's 30 rounds in here. When there's 30 rounds in a magazine, any fucking AR magazine in the world, except for maybe if you order from Wish.com, is going to, when there's 30 rounds in it, is going to have some play. See this? I could push the rounds in. See how they're moving down? Push them down. When there's 30 rounds in a magazine, that you're going to have play in there. Which means if there's play in there, that means you're going to be able to put the fucking mag in the weapon. And the bolt carrier is going to push down on those rounds. And it's going to provide enough play in there for when the bolt comes back, these rounds come up and you could feed around. So this whole thing about downloading your magazine by two rounds is just fucking ridiculous. Um, put your magazine in the right way. That's all. Slap it hard like you're supposed to. Put it in the right way. You're not going to have a problem. And count your fucking rounds. See, people will keep putting mag rounds in here. And I took an extra round out of this magazine um, so that I can demonstrate something. There's 30 rounds in here right now. Guess what? Now there's 31. All right. And let me take one more mag, one more round out of this mag. And I'll try and put this. Oh, I can't put any more rounds in there. There must be 30 rounds in here right now. And then people will swear that this magazine is loaded to 30 rounds. And then they can't they can't they can't load it into the rifle. Well, no shit, okay? If you have if your bolt is forward, there's no play in here. So this magazine is not going to feed into your fucking rifle, all right? 30 rounds, not 31. And I've had this problem before. I've seen this a lot. Um, anybody who knows me personally knows that I've, I've trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Patriot... 
folks, and I used to run into this problem all the time. I'd have somebody, <clears throat> um, we would do gear checks, and I would take a magazine, and I would push it in, right? And I'd push it in here. Okay, there's that much play in that. That means there's 30 rounds in there. I'd go to somebody... I'd get their magazine and I'd go to push down. And I couldn't push it down at all. And I said, you have 31 rounds in here. And they're like, no, I have 30 rounds in here. And I'm like, no, you have 31 rounds in here. This round isn't going to seat in your magazine unless your bolt is locked, locked open. You have 31 rounds in here. And they're like, no, I have 30 rounds. I said, did you count your rounds? And they're like, no. Oh, okay. Well, if you keep stuffing rounds in here until they can't go in anymore, you're going to have 31 rounds. That's how it works. Unless you have, like I said, some Wish.com magazine, some early generation Tapco mags or something. Maybe you might be able to get like 31 or 32 and have a tiny bit of play or something, you know. But if you just have 30 rounds in your magazine, you're never going to have a problem with putting the magazine into your rifle unless you're not doing it right. When you put a mag... And here, and here's the thing, guys. When you put an AR magazine in, it's a very simple process. You put the magazine in, right? And then you put it in, and then you slap it like a man, and then you tug on it a little bit. You grab it and try and pull it down, right? And if it's in, it's in. It's not going to fucking come out, all right? So, again, you put your magazine in. You slap it and you pull, and I could do this like in a split second. I mean, it's just, it's just you know, from practice and doing it the right way, that's how a magazine goes into an AR. Now, sometimes maybe you don't need to pull on it, but pulling on it guarantees that it's in. But you put it in and you slap it. You put it in, you slap it. Put it in, you slap it, okay? Um, some people... They don't want to do that. Some people give it a little tap, a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. That doesn't always work either. All right. I mean, especially if you're wearing gloves, those gloves are going to, the gloves are going to absorb like a lot of uh, impact. So if you're slapping it and giving a little tap, then you're not putting, especially if the bolt is forward. <clears throat> now, if the bolt is back, you might have a much easier time. But if the bolt is forward, then um, you're going to have to give it a fucking slap to make sure the magazine is seated properly. Otherwise, you're not doing it right. So the thing where the downloading your magazine too comes in is that people are just fucking stupid. And that's really all it is. Um, you're not training. Basically, you're just you're just dumb. All right. Um, and and maybe not on everything, but certainly on how to load a magazine. You know, you either have 31 rounds in there, so it's not going to go in, and that's why people say download it by two, or you're not slapping it properly, which is why people say to download it by two. But even so, let's take this magazine and download it by two. See, we have 30 minus one minus one equals 28. I'm going to put this magazine into the rifle. It's literally no easier and no harder. I, like, it literally feels the same. This one has 30 rounds in it. This one has 30 rounds in it. Literally feels the same to me. So, with these people talking about downloading your magazines to 28 rounds, uh, that's garbage. I'm telling you right now, that's fucking garbage. They're like, oh, well, in the heat of the moment and, and pressure, when there's a lot of pressure on, you're going to mess that up. Um, guess what? <clears throat> you're not going to mess that up if you train and you train and you train. You're not going to mess that up if you put the magazine in the right way. Um, you know, so downloading it by two rounds, I, it's not making any fucking difference. All right. Um, just make sure that you count your rounds when you're loading your mags uh, so you don't have 31 rounds in there and fuck your reload up. Now, if you do have 31, or 31 rounds in there, just make sure your bolt is locked back to the rear. Like, you know, if you shoot, uh, if you shoot until your gun is empty, you'll be doing an emergency reload. 
a 31 round magazine is probably not going to cause you any problems because your bolt is already locked back to the rear. You put the magazine in, you release the bolt, it chambers that round that's on top, you have 31 rounds and you're ready to go. On the other hand, if you still have a round in the chamber and you're doing a tactical reload, maybe you have like five rounds left in your magazine and you want to get a fresh one in there. So there's still one in the chamber. You take your uh, you take your magazine with five rounds in there. You put your new 31 round magazine in there. Your bolt is closed because you have a round in the chamber. You're not going to be able to get that magazine in there. And then people are saying, oh, well, it doesn't fit. My 30 round magazine doesn't fit. <laughs> You see, you see, you see what's happening. It's just people are fucking dumb. They're not paying attention to what they're doing. So I've seen this go around a lot in the tactic, tactic cool community, where all of a sudden this whole twenty eight rounds in your magazine thing is a is like the the way to go. Um, listen, just fucking load your magazines properly and load your magazines properly. You're never gonna have an issue. That's all I got to say about that. I'm done with my rant. So, uh, moving back, magazines uh, aside, I did upgrade my trigger, uh, my uh, trigger guard here to a Magpul, um, bigger magazine or a bigger uh, trigger guard. So the reason I upgraded that was because the stock uh, trigger guard in there had a big empty area in here, and when I would hold the pistol grip. It would like, you know, because I don't just hold it for a little tiny bit. Um, I used to take this on pat mile long patrols, miles long patrols, um, you know, shoot a lot. So when you actually use your rifle, when you actually like do stuff with it, uh, these little things become big things. And every time I was holding my rifle, I would hold it, you know, where the pistol grip is, and then right under there, it would scrape the hell out of my middle finger knuckle. And um, so eventually I was like, you know what, I need to fill in that little hole under here, um, you know, so it doesn't keep doing that. And uh, so anyway, filled that up and um, much more comfortable now. So that's why I did that. <clears throat> the trigger I have in here, uh, the trigger is an ALG... I think it's an ALG combat trigger or maybe just an ALG trigger. <clears throat> I can't really remember, but basically the uh, significance of this trigger is that it's um it's a uh, it's a highly polished mill spec trigger. So it's still your mill spec trigger, but it's just kind of polished in ways to where it breaks and resets and you know, it feels feels much smoother. It's still about a 5 pound trigger. You know, it's still still tip. It's still your uh, military spec weight trigger, um, but it's just highly polished in certain areas. So uh, it feels a lot better when you're shooting. Uh, let's see what else here. Moving back, I'm pretty sure the uh, pistol grip came stock with the actual uh, rifle when I first bought it. I'm 90% positive that's that's what happened there. Um, of course shoot at a pretty good amount so I still have the brass on my deflector there I think that looks so cool there when you see that because <clears throat> it shows obviously you know you're using your rifle um, I did upgrade the charging handle to a, uh, a BCM medium uh, uh, gunfighter uh, charging handle here now this is an older uh, model charging handle I tried to find the exact one but they changed the style up a little bit. I'm not sure why they did that, but um, they did. So when I got this upper receiver, I actually took the uh, charging handle from my old upper and put it into this one because it's still, you know, it's not bent or warped or anything yet. So I was like, shit, okay, I'm sticking with this one because I like this one better than the new ones that they're making. So anyway, change that out. Uh, moving back. Uh uh, what is it? Magpul CTR uh, stock here. Yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much industry standard at this point. I know there's some other random ones out there, but I like that lightweight. Whatever, it does a trick. Um, now my sling here is actually secured. Now it's secured for a reason. Basically, I'll, to deploy this sling, all I have to do is grab this and pull, and the whole sling comes out. And of course, it's a two-point sling. My first point's up here. Uh, second point is under under here. 
All right, so if I pull that tab, the entire uh, sling comes out. Oh, but the reason, <laughs> earthquake, but the reason I have it braced with uh, one of my wristbands here um, is basically because, guys, when it's in the car, you don't want it, uh, you don't want your sling to be, you know, out there, uh, you know, grabbing everything. Uh, again, that's no go. If you want to, if you have to, like, deploy it quickly, uh, you don't want to have to worry about your sling getting hung up on your shifter or anything else in the in the vehicle so uh, i like to keep mine uh tidy so um i guess a couple of things that i'll talk about are a little bit of knickknacks here um safety i love the safety because it's not an ambidextrous safety if you've seen my bren 2 video i think it was my first one um, you kind of understand I have a huge pet peeve with fucking ambidextrous safeties. <clears throat> I think they're really, um, uh, I think they're really ridiculous and, and, uh, over, overrated in my opinion. Cause as a righty, I only need a freaking safety selector on that side. If I was a lefty, I would only need a safety selector on the other side. We don't need it on both sides. So anyway, I'm just glad that uh, this one is just uh, just on the one side. That's good. Um, do you have a magazine release on either side? So the magazine release standard is on that is right here, um, but also on the other side here, I have a magazine release right here. So I press that with my thumb, and I could take my mag out. All right, um, under my sling here, let's move that a little bit. Uh, my ping pong paddle, they call it, and bolt release, um, is actually a little bit bigger because I did try putting a, uh, what's it called? I did try putting a, oh my God, I hate this thing so much. I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, what the hell is it called? bad lever i tried putting a bad lever on here uh, when it was like you know the brand new thing the new coolness um but i fucking hated it uh first of all it wouldn't clear this part right here this is kind of a proprietary lower receiver but whatever but um it wouldn't clear this part right here and it wasn't working very smoothly so i was like eh you know what i'm not too crazy about it either way um but then when I actually got it, I finally got it working, got it working really well. And um, I ended up, you know, really not liking it. I just thought it was too much shit going on inside of my trigger well, or yeah, my, my, my inside of my trigger guard. And I was like, you know what? <sighs> fuck this. I don't want, I don't want extra shit going on in there, you know? So I was like, fuck it. And then I tried unscrewing it and I stripped it. So I couldn't take it off. So then I got a Dremel and I just cut it. Um, and I was left with this uh, bigger, bigger uh, ping pong paddle. Um, but I actually really like it because it's easy to hit, you know, um, when I'm reloading. I don't even really reload like that. When I reload, I just use the charging handle. But, um, you know, every once in a while I'll do it. But it's just real easy to hit. So it's there. It's bigger target, whatever. And, um, of course, I put a little bit of artwork in my safety selector. <laughs> So uh, the X means safe and uh, the round there means fire. <laughs> so um, obviously I'm with a very good department that kind of lets me, uh, gives me some, some leeway. They treat us like uh, smart, capable human beings, which is kind of nice. I, I know that some departments are a little robotic and um, I'm not really a fan of that, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. But anyway, guys, this is my duty rifle, SIG 516 with a BCM upper receiver. Uh, this sling here was actually a Magpul. Well, is a Magpul. When you originally get it, though, it has this big loop in it, and I do this with all 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 my slings, even with the Bren too. Um, I like the material that the Magpul slings are made out of, but I hate the actual design of the Magpul mag or uh, slings. <clears throat> the reason is, is because there's that loop in them and I get it, the loop is so you can quickly adjust it, but that loop also hangs up on shit. It's a big fucking stupid loop in the middle of your, in your gear. It definitely doesn't allow you to streamline anything. So what I do is I get my knife and I cut all the stitching out of it and uh, when I cut all the stitching out of it, 
Matter of fact, I still have a little bit of it still in my fibers here. But anyway, I cut all the stitching out and then uh, I just kind of re re-thread everything through the little plastic parts here. There's two of them. There's one here. You can, can't really see it that well. But um, basically, I just turned it into a nice, easy, simple um, two-point sling. And um, I've been doing that with Magpul, Mag, or Magpul uh, slings since 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. <coughs> so, uh, using the uh, the material of Magpul, I make, in my opinion, better better slings out of uh, the Magpul stuff that Magpul does. But whatever, just my preference. So anyway, guys, uh, that's the duty rifle. Of course, fires 556223, um, and of course, the ammunition that uh, this department uses is uh, soft point. Uh, two two three rounds and of course the reason for the soft point rounds is because when they had a fleshy target they you know they um, uh, fragment more mushroom more on impact uh, plus there's less collateral uh, risk when you, if you do have to use the use the rifle so these rounds will still go through drywall they'll still go through car doors and stuff like that they'll still penetrate windshields maybe not as easily as fmjs but they'll still do it um, they'll still go through soft body armor, uh, so uh, they're still good rounds, but just less collateral risk is all. So uh, let's see. I think I covered everything I needed to. Oh, uh, the zero, I'm zeroed at 50 yards uh, with my iron sights and my uh, Aimpoint Pro. Uh, of course, when I get a new optic or I get that one fixed, then um, I'll be getting a new... Uh, I'll, I'll be zeroing that one in at 50 yards as well. And the cool thing with 223 and 556, if you zero your rifle at your optic or your sights in at um, 50 yards, is you're going to be in the same ballpark at 200. You might be like an inch high at 100. And then you'll have to just learn your sight over bore access for close range stuff. But that's, uh, you know, that's no big deal. As long as you train, it's easy to, uh, easy to adjust for, <coughs> especially at close ranges. So that's it, guys. That's everything that I had to uh, cover in this video here. I uh, hope you liked the content. hope you learned something about magazines. Uh, that was my big thing in this video. If you're going to learn one thing about magazines, is count your fucking ammo. Load them right. If you load them right and you load them right, you're not going to look like an idiot. That's all I got to say there. So anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's it. Stay safe. Stay smart. I'll talk to you all next time. Blue Line Patriot signing out.